This video is intended to give you a very quick and simple introduction to running regressions in Excel. We're running a regression in this case in the context of a uh, forecasting model where we're looking at a trend in sales, but you could easily run the regression on any, uh, any variables that you want to look at a linear relationship in between. So the linear relationship, y equals a plus b times x, a is the intercept or the constant, b is what we multiply the independent variable by in order to uh, get a prediction of, uh, uh, of, of the dependent variable which is changing. In our case, we're going to look at sales and whether there is a sales trend uh, in this data and uh, but you could do it for a variety of ways. So in this case, sales is the dependent variable and just time or the steps in time uh, are the independent variable that we're looking at. So in this case, to create the independent variable, we are just gonna put the numbers in because we're looking at a trend, we're just looking at first time period, second time period, up to the 24th time period, which says the trend in the historical data, and we assume that the trend in the future will be the same as in the past, and then we can use the steps going forward. So uh, in this case, we can just put one, two, and go down. A little trick in Excel is you can highlight the two. When you see that black cross, just pull it down and it'll fill in the numbers for you. So we now have the dependent and the independent variable. We're going to, uh, we're going to run a regression. One of the things you have to do to run a regression in Excel is to go into your preferences, into the add-ons and add the data analysis add-on, which will give you a suite of tools, uh, which will give you a suite of tools that will uh, do some various data analysis. If I go to the data tab here, and I'm going to move my camera here for a second and go way over to the top right, you can see at the top right there the data analysis uh, button, and we can push that and we'll get, uh, we'll, we'll get some options to do data analysis. Now, before I run a regression in this case, uh, I know I'm going to run a regression. I'm using data which where I know that there is a trend, but I'm just I think good practice in this circumstance is to take a look at your data first. That's something I will always do in Excel. So I'm going to go to I'm going to highlight the months and the and the dollar uh, and the sales, and I'm going to go to insert and over here to charts, and I'm going to pick a line chart. Uh, and I'm going to insert a line chart. So now we can get a look at the data. So what we have here, it, clearly if we look at that sales data, there looks like a slight upward trend, but we've got, also got some significant seasonality here. And that seasonality uh, will have to be reflected in a different way. We're not going to be able to do that. What we're looking for is a linear trend line. And in other parts of a forecasting course, you would see how to adjust, make adjustments for seasonality in data like this. But we're only looking at a trend forecast. So for now, I'm going to move that to the side. Uh, looks to me like I have a trend, so I should be okay. So I have my dependent variable here, I have my independent variable here, and I'm gonna hit data. I'm gonna go over and hit my data analysis tab that I showed you a minute ago, and this box uh, pops up. In this box, I can do a whole bunch of simple statistical things, covariance analysis, uh, f-test for sample variances. I can even do some forecasting things it's got an exponential smoothing function and a moving average function, which allows me uh, to, uh, to do some of the things, some of the simple things that, that sometimes we use in, in forecasting. But for now, I'm going to just click on regression and then OK, OK, and then this box comes up. And so you can see... Uh, it asked me for my Y data. I was practicing before I was recording. You can see I've already highlighted the sales data, which is the dependent variable, the thing we're trying to show changes based on time. And I highlight that column. 
Now I'm going to go to the X range, which is the independent variable. And then in this case, I'm going to do just my numbers 1 to 24 because I'm looking at the passage of time. So each does each month have a consistent growth or trend that I should incorporate. Now, go back to that chart uh, and you can see there's significant seasonality, which we would have to account for, but there is an under, we're hoping that there is an underlining trend that we're going to uh, get tease out with our regression. Uh, we don't want the constant to be zero. Y equals A plus B, C. We're not saying that those sales start at zero. Uh, we would have sales that probably go further back than that. And so we're just trying to determine what that, what's called an intercept is. And we're going to leave that, uh, uh, we're not going to constrain that to zero. We can put the, uh, put the results in a new worksheet. We're going to just put it in a, in a range in this worksheet. So we've clicked output range. There's some additional reporting here if we want it. We don't need it in this circumstance. So I put in my Y range, I put in my X range. I don't want the constant to be zero. I've told it to uh, put the output right here. And then all I have to do is hit uh, go and it will run a regression for me. So we get a lot of results here. Uh, I can just, uh, R squared represents uh, the amount of variation that is reflected in your uh, in your uh, regression and because we have this other very seasonal variability we didn't expect it to be really very high and i would argue that 24 25 percent that we have is pretty good this tells me i have a good fit overall and then down here are the parameters that i'm most interested in the intercept a plus b x uh, a is the intercept and this X variable parameter 19.1 is the slope parameter. It is what we multiply X times, that's the B part, what we multiply X times to get our slope. We can see that the P value is lower than 0 0.05 in both cases. So those are significant, which tells us that we do in fact have a trend. So now let's go look at what our trend looks like. So we are gonna go into uh, this cell here. We're gonna put in an equals, which tells Excel that we're gonna put a formula in and we're gonna add the intercept. What we're doing here is the formula, Y equals A plus BX. Uh, so what's gonna get outputted here is Y. So the first thing we want is the intercept. Now we could enter that in each one of these cells, but we're gonna copy it down. And because we're gonna copy it down, we actually want to lock uh, that intercept number to just always be referring to right there, because otherwise when we copy it down, it'll copy, uh, it will also copy down from there uh, and you'll get, in, you'll get incorrect results. So uh, here I'm gonna just simply push F4 and you can see it puts dollar signs in front of the I and in front of the 18, which locks that value to that cell. Uh, you can put them in manually if you want to, but the F4 function is really quite nice. Just to highlight, if you push it again, it locks just the row. Uh, if you push it again, it locks just the column. Push it again, it takes the locking off altogether and we want both of them to be locked. So then I'm gonna, do, so that's A, I'm gonna add B, which is the 19.13. I'm again gonna lock that because I wanna use the same number every time. So there you can see it's locked times. And because I'm going over E1 now with my formula, I'm just gonna put E1 in by hand, uh, by hand which gives me the X variable. So I've got A plus B times X. I don't want to lo lock X. I want to go down. As time goes up, I want my forecast to go up. So now I've, I've inputted that in there uh, and I have 1000.6. So I'm a little high earlier. Remember, we're reflecting, uh, we're, we're, trying to, uh, we're, we're trying to come up with what the trend is 
because January is lower than in the seasonal index than some of the later months are, we would expect this to be a little high. I'm gonna highlight that cell. Again, I'm gonna to go to get that black cross, copy it down, and now I have uh, my, my trend line, which will allow me to just, if, I, if all I was supposed to do is come up with a, a forecast based on a trend line, that would be my forecast. In this case, I would argue that I should probably do some seasonal adjustments, but we're not going to do that in this video. Now, let's just look quickly at what that would look like. I'm going to highlight the data again. I'm going to go to insert. I'm going to go line graph and I'm going to have two lines. And so you can see what we've done here is fit a line that shows that there is a trend there, that there is consistently some movement up in sales, but we haven't reflected this variability uh, or seasonality, which we would do using other approaches. So what we've done is highlighted how to do regressions in uh, Excel. Uh, we add the data analysis pack in, uh, in preferences, and we hit the regression button, highlight what we want the dependent variable Y to be, highlight what we want the independent variable uh, X to be, uh, make choices as to where we want the output to go, hit go, and we very quickly, very easily, very efficiently uh, run a regression uh, that gives us the output we want. And then we can put the formula into uh, Excel and make a prediction or make a forecast as we've been asked to do. So that's very quickly and simply how to run regressions in Excel with a particular application to forecasting. Thanks. Have a great day.